Welcome back to Catalyst University. My name is Kevin Tokoff. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel for future videos and notifications. In this video, we're going to discuss the process of methanogenesis, and this is going to be the intestinal production of methane gas. So it turns out, as we mentioned in the previous video on hydrogen genesis, or intestinal production of hydrogen gas, that there's actually bacteria in the small intestine that are actually going to be able to produce hydrogen gas. Those same bacteria that produce hydrogen gas are going to use this hydrogen gas and the carbon dioxide, both of which are products of formate breakdown, they're going to use both of those to uh, generate precursors and ingredients to make methane, so things used in methanogenesis. So just a quick recap. So in the last stage of hydrogen uh, synthesis, formate is going to be broken down by formate hydrogen lyase into hydrogen gas and carbon dioxide. The carbon dioxide, along with other sources of it, this is not the only source, are going to be ligated to a coenzyme known as methanofuran. That's going to be the first step of methanogenesis, and we'll see that in just a minute. The hydrogen gas is going to be responsible for generating reduced cofactors. So the hydrogen gas can be used to generate a pool of reduced F420 or coenzyme F420. Coenzyme F420 is a heme derivative. Um, it absorbs light at 420 nanometers, thus the name, and it's going to be uh, used to perform reductions in various reactions in methanogenesis. And the same thing is true for the reduced ferrodoxin pool. Hydrogen is going to be used, the electrons from it, to generate a reduced ferrodoxin pool, and then reduced ferrodoxin will in turn be used in several reactions actually in methanogenesis and it'll perform reductions in that. So we had to generate these two things but in particular the hydrogen gas because we can get CO2 from other sources and now we're going to see methanogenesis. Now I'm not showing you any structures here because it's going to get fairly complicated but I will say this that in the middle of this pathway it's going to greatly, very greatly in fact, resemble tetrahydrofolate metabolism in humans. In fact, uh, the actual cofactor that's used down here, which is uh, methanoterin or tetrahydromethanoterin, is structurally very similar to tetrahydrofolate. And it's actually going to have some similar functions, some similar binding, and also reactions. Okay? Now, we're going to start off with carbon dioxide, and we're also ultimately going to need to reduce that carbon dioxide down to methane. So most of these reactions are going to be successive reductions, because carbon dioxide is the most oxidized form of carbon. So first, CO2 is going to be uh, ligated to MF, which is a coenzyme called methanofuran. Okay, a very strange cofactor that we will not see anywhere else. It is strictly involved in methanogenesis, and in fact, most of these cofactors are, for the most part, strictly involved in methanogenesis, such as methanoterin or tetrahydromethanoterin. F420 has some other functions elsewhere, and then CoM and CoB. These are going to be involved pretty much only in methanogenesis. So methanofuran is going to be ligated to carbon dioxide, or vice versa, with subsequent reduction. And those electrons are going to come from this ferrodoxin. Okay, so again, notice here, here's the reaction right here that we talked about for hydrogen generating this reduced ferrodoxin pool. Okay, here's our hydrogen gas. Um, there's a complex actually in the membrane of this particular cell. And it's going to take the hydrogen's electrons, transfer them to ferrodoxin, and that contributes to this reduced ferrodoxin pool, which is going to be used to reduce carbon dioxide and ligate it to methanofuran. That's going to generate this molecule called formyl methanofuran. So now this methanofuran will have a formal group attached. It's now uh, one lower oxidation state, so it's a little bit more reduced than CO2. We're now going to use a formal transferase or a transformalase. This is going to move the formyl group onto tetrahydromethanoterin. So we're going to remove it from the methanofuran. That comes off. And now we have this molecule formyl tetrahydromethanoterin. Okay. This is now going to ultimately be cyclized into this molecule, methanyl tetrahydromethanoterin. This is catalyzed by tetrahydromethanoterin cyclohydrolase. Again, we saw a cyclohydrolase that was present in tetrahydrofolate metabolism. This is basically the same enzyme that has multiple specificities. So it's going to be able to, tr it's going to, be able to cyclize this molecule into what's called methanyl tetrahydromethanoterin. All right. 
From here, we're actually now going to use the reducing equivalents from F420. So over here, we actually see um, electrons coming from NADPH. Okay, Electrons are going to come from NADPH, and they're going to reduce uh, F420. Now, ultimately, there's another source of electrons, and that's what we mentioned in the previous video, hydrogen gas. So hydrogen gas can also transfer its electrons to F420, also further contributing to the F420 pool those electrons are going to ultimately reduce methanyl tetrahydromethanoterin into methylene tetrahydromethanoterin. Okay? Um, also note that there's another enzyme in here very similar to this, I don't name it here, but it can also use electrons directly from hydrogen. Um, but we're just really talking about this one over here on the left, which is called methanyl tetrahydromethanoterin dehydrogenase. Again, the primary enzyme is this one on the left that I just mentioned, and it's going to use electrons from reduced F420. Now, as I mentioned, the product of this enzyme is methylene tetrahydromethanoterin. Again, something very similar to what we saw in tetrahydrofolate metabolism. Now, this methylene group that's present on here is going to be totally reduced to a methyl group. This is catalyzed by methylene tetrahydromethanoterin reductase. Again, this is also going to use the electrons from F420. So we're taking from that reduced F420 pool, and we're going to reduce the methylene group into a methyl group, and that gives us this, this molecule called methyl tetrahydromethanoterin. Um, very similar to what we had for methyl tetrahydrofolate. So this methanoterin now is going to have a bound methyl group, but it turns out that this methyl group can't just simply be removed as methane. We've got to go through a series of other processes first, actually two enzymes. The first one is just an S-methyl transferase. What this is going to do is it's going to transfer the methyl group from tetrahydromethanoterin onto a coenzyme called CoM, or coenzyme M. We have not seen this coenzyme before, and we really never will again. Um, that's because this M stands for methane, so it's really only going to be involved in methane metabolism, particularly this biosynthetic pathway. And this reaction is going to be unique in the sense that it's actually going to be, uh, occur in the membrane of the bacterial cell, and it's going to utilize a sodium pump uh, to give some of the energy for this reaction. So again, you can see the methyl group here is going to be transferred onto coenzyme M, and so now we have methyl S-CoM. Um, CoM has a thiol group and that's why this S is here. Now the methyl group is on a sulfur rather than a nitrogen shown right here. We also get subsequent uh, pumping out of a sodium ion. Okay, That helps maintain the sodium gradient out here. All right. Now this methyl S-CoM is now going to be reduced further and that means that the methyl group is now going to pick up an extra hydrogen and become methane. This is easier said than done. It's going to be catalyzed by an enzyme called heterodisulfide reductase. This is where we have CoB. CoB, or coenzyme B, is also a thiol. So what's going to happen is CoB, its thiol, is going to attack the sulfur on the CoM. Okay, so if the sulfur on the CoB attacks the sulfur on the CoM, then now we're going to have a heterodisulfide bond between CoB and CoM. But that's going to kick off this methyl group as the leaving group, and it's going to pick up a proton from solution and become methane. And that gives us the generation of methane. However, there's another part of this reaction that requires um, the actual reduction of CoB and CoM. So this is the second activity of the enzyme. It's going to use electrons from ferredoxin again, and it's going to reduce this disulfide bridge, which is going to regenerate free CoM and free CoB. The free CoB is going to be able to perform another reaction of heterodisulfide reductase, the CoM will go back over here for another reaction of S-methyl transferase. But in any case, this final reaction, the reductase, gives us methane, or CH4. And this can actually be, uh, it can diffuse out of this bacterial cell and it will be behave as a gas inside the intestine. And ultimately during flatulence, so the act of farting, uh, the methane will actually be released. And we won't go into the applications of methane here, but just I wanted to show you how it's actually produced through the process of methanogenesis by bacteria in the small intestine. There is one other thing I wanted to mention from the previous video, and that's that remember that the hydrogen gas and CO2, a big source of these is going to be formate. And remember there's this enzyme formate hydrogen lyase that causes its breakdown.
If you look over here on the left side, we can see that formate can actually be transported into this cell. So this cell is actually going to be able to do both the hydrogen production and this process of methanogenesis. The way it does it is by getting the formate into the cell, and then it's going to uh, ultimately catalyze the breakdown of it, and the hydrogen electrons will then go to F420, as shown right here, contributing to the ferrodoxin pool. Ultimately, the hydrogen gas, as we see, can do other things, such as contribute to the ferrodoxin pool. But this is how we get formate into the cell, through a transporter such as this. Again, it's going to be coupled with the formate hydrogen lias that we just saw. All right, so hopefully this video made sense. Hopefully you understand a little bit more about methanogenesis as it's occurring in the intestines and how we actually get methane gas ultimately from carbon dioxide. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. In the next video, we're going to go over intestinal sulfate reduction, and we'll also see that this is a process that's actually coupled to the hydrogen oxidation that we just saw.